right. What's up, guys? Welcome to the uh, very first Shtick Live. Uh, what's going on, internets? Uh, I'm reporting here from Chicago, Illinois. Um, I'm Seth Payne. I'm also the producer for this, so check this movie magic out. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Mm. Um, yeah, so uh, if you don't know who I am, uh, I am a comedian um, who is uh, based out of Buffalo, New York, lived in D.C. for about six years, and then last year moved to Chicago. Um, Elizabeth Fulton and I, Elizabeth is tuned in online right now, um, she and I formed a, um, an improv group called Best Party Ever, and uh, we're doing a bunch of improv, duo improv together um, back in D.C. when I was there. Shout out to Wit and Dojo Comedy. Um, and we decided to come up with this idea um, to, we both like doing stand-up, um, and we were like, what if we uh, fused the two comedy circles in, uh, in Washington, D.C., um, essentially combining the improv community with the stand-up community. So that's what we did. Um, and uh, we basically provided improvisers the opportunity to try stand-up if they had never done it before um, or hadn't done it in a while or if they were experienced at it and just wanted to get some more exposure. We were, we were doing all of it. So um, get rid of my name there. Uh, so yeah, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we started that show called It Shtick um, over at Flash Nightclub about two years ago. I want to say over two years ago, maybe two and a half. And um, like I said, I moved about a year ago and around, I want to say December of this past year, Elizabeth, correct me if I'm wrong, um, we changed locations um, in Washington to the Arendelle, which is an amazing venue. Um, I used to go there and watch uh, soccer games, football games, and uh, they graciously hosted us. Um, and Elizabeth, Stace, let's see, I think Elizabeth and Stacy and Steph are all... Uh, helping to run a really cool program out there. Obviously, with given circumstances, um, all these shows have been put on hold. Um, I, in turn, started Shtick in Chicago this past January um, out of Shuba's in Chicago, if you've ever heard of that. Um, notorious live music venue and also does a bunch of comedy stuff. So shout out to Shuba's. Um, we only had two shows there so far, but they were completely packed. The crowds were awesome. Um, it's been really fun and the response, um, from the performers as well as the people who have come to the shows, both in DC and Chicago has been overwhelming. So thank you guys so much for coming out to all these shows. Um, yeah, we were really bummed that we couldn't do these shows for like the next couple months, given everything that's going on. So we came up with this awesome idea, uh, to do a live streamed event. Um, essentially I'm going to be hosting it right here from Chicago live. So I'll be able to see, um, all of your comments, uh, concerns, uh, roasts, all that stuff. Um, Elizabeth is in the chat, Brad, uh, Rickert who helps throw stick with me out here. Uh, he's in the chat too. So, uh, they'll be fielding all of your, uh, comments and all that good stuff. Um, we got pretty much like 30 submissions from comedians, both from Chicago and DC. It's funny because we talked about combining these two worlds like way down the road. Uh, little did we know we were gonna be doing it like almost right away. So this is so cool. Um, I've gotten to watch most of these videos. They're so funny. Um, all of our comics submitted uh, four to five. The, the criteria was basically like four to five minutes. Um, some of the vi videos are a little less. But um, it's just solo. It's whatever they want to do for four to five minutes. Most of this is uh, stand-up sets, uh, which is really cool. Some of it's a little creative. Um, so get, get ready to get weird. It's going to be fun. Um, what else can I say? Okay, um, we are doing donations as well. Um, right here, feel free during this whole show uh, to donate to our PayPal account we set up for this show, shtickcomedy at gmail.com. Uh, the donations we decided to split 50-50, so 50% of all the money that we raise tonight um, during this broadcast uh, is going to go towards towards the uh, Arendelle's GoFundMe, so that's to keep them open. The other 50% is going to go to Chicago's COVID-19 Response Fund, uh, so that is just going to help out with, you know, 
all the people that are out of work right now in Chicago. Um, so basically all the money that would normally go towards our bartenders, servers, um, the venues that host us month to month, uh, just think of it like that. Like if there was, uh, if you if you're gonna buy a drink or some food, basically donate the equivalent to that. I know it's kind of tough times. Not everybody has a job. Um, the stream is free, so uh, all the jokes are free. Donate what you can, and uh, we appreciate it. Hell yeah! All right. Uh, so that's all the whatever stuff. Um, so I have some new bits. They're probably awful. Uh, the good thing is, is I don't get to hear the. I mean, I'm gonna hear the deafening silence either way. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to try out some new stuff. I go on a lot of flights throughout the year with travel and, um, I, I feel like when the, uh, the, the we call it the pilot is updating you on all of the, uh, I don't know the, the happenings on the city you're about to land in. It almost sounds like they are t completely making it up on the spot or just going through their phone all of a sudden. Like they're totally, they're never on point with like all of the information. Like they'll just be like, uh, this is your, your captain speaking. Um, uh, uh, we are, uh, uh, uh about 60, 65,000, 25 feet up. Um, I don't know. That sounds legit. And uh, we're about to be landing in uh, beautiful Dallas, Texas, uh, where the weather is. Um, uh, I didn't. I didn't pay for Wi-Fi. Uh, it's probably about a uh, sixty-two. A little rainy. I think it rained yesterday. We should be there in about. Um, uh, hmm. I was uh, 15 to 30, give or take a few. All right. Well, I'm going to let you guys get back to it, and uh, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. All right. That's my uh, impression of uh, stand-up pilot. This is so weird doing it. With <laughs> I, feel like I'm, I feel like I'm talking into a recorder. Um, okay. I got two more. So, uh, <laughs> and then we'll go to, uh, we got actual videos with people that did a lot better. Um so I was in Disney World uh, a couple of months ago for a work gig, and um, and I they they'll put me up at resorts where there's like families staying there, and I had to go grab food um, from like one of the uh, on-site convenience stores. So there's a bunch of families there, a bunch of kids, and there was uh, a mom there with her daughter, and the daughter was dressed up like you know like Tinkerbell, and the daughter just starts like laughing hysterically. And it's like one of those like little kid, like full body laughs where like, you don't even understand what they're laughing at. And it might be like the dumbest thing ever, but it instantly just like fills you up with like warmth. through like, Oh God, I remember like when I used to laugh like that, or it's just, it's just wholesome. And the mom was like, what are you laughing at? And the girl's like, I don't know. And I was like, what, what utter bliss to, to just be laughing and to be so, like, you're just in Disney World, dressed as Tinkerbell, laughing your your shoes off. And, man, I, I can't even think of the last time I just laughed for, for no reason at all. Um, shout out to <laughs> coronavirus. Um, we should all aspire to just laugh at, at shit like that. Kids, they're a good time. Um, let's see. What else? So... Uh, I've noticed a lot of people have been posting on Instagram and Facebook their man crush Mondays or their women crush Wednesdays. These are the same people who have been dating for like either like a couple of weeks or a couple of years and they do this like every other week or just like every week if it's a new relationship and I'm just sitting there like we get it like you guys... I mean, are you, are you literally, you're writing this and then you're just showing it to each other? Like, you have to be next to each other. Like, how much do you have to be up each other's own butts to be posting about this? Like, we got it. We got it. I don't know. I want, every time I see that, every time I see WCW, I always think, I don't think of Women Crush Monday or Women Crush Wednesday. I think of WWF wrestling. So I kind of want to put up a post and just be like, my WCW for this week 
is China. And I'm calling you out. I want you down Monday night in the ring. Person on person. One person leaves. WCW. Ugh. Randy Macho Man Savage. Um, so yeah, that's what I think of. And maybe I'll post that. We'll see. Um, WWF. Don't confuse that with the... Uh, the uh, worldwide fund for nature because uh you'll you'll just show up amped up on red bulls and your signage and your stone cold steve austin shirt and you're just gonna see a bunch of pandas fat ass pandas just sitting there eating bamboo not giving a fuck so this is not what 316 means jeez um I've got one more thing. So there's a TP shortage, right? But Taco Bell is still open. I'm just saying. It's going to get down to just Taco Bell open, and the people with the most TP are going to win. Because you know after you've had Taco Bell for at least a day or two in a row, you need all the toiletries that you can muster. Am I right? Okay. Ended on... Uh, ended on toilet humor, which is uh, my go-to. All right, guys. Are you ready for your first comic? First comic coming to the stage. You know we're from Washington, D.C. Best party ever. Shtick. Give it up for Elizabeth Fulton. You can do this. What if, what if my mouth moved and you said the words? That, then you're still being taped. Doesn't solve Shit. So for all the comedians watching, uh, we all know that the first few seconds are really important to your set. It's when the audience member decides if they're going to be engaged or if they're going to heckle or if they're going to go to the bar for another drink or I guess in this case the refrigerator. Um, so I'm choosing to start my first uh, few seconds of this bit um, with just a sleeping cat. Oh, sorry, I went to the refrigerator. <laughs> um, but so a lot of my comedy revolves around commenting on the world around me. And so as you can imagine, it's a little bit limited right now. Um, but I thought that I could just dive into my notes um, from things I've written down previously just to like see if there are some gems in there that I didn't know about. Let's see. All right, okay. Okay, so I went to see the new... I, no, I already fucked it up. Let me try this again. <laughs> I want to see the new Charlie's Angels movie because Kristen Stewart says more in the trailer than she did in the entire Twilight series. I want to be open to the possibility that the Twilight director gave her the note to act like if she was going to be hit with a dodgeball, then she should let it smack her in the face rather than reacting. <laughs> um, maybe not a good one. Um, all right, next one. Um, all right, so. Does anyone else think that the Miranda rights were written by a teenage girl? You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be held against you in a court of law. God, Miranda, why are you so petty, bitch? Um, you... <laughs> You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed for you. What, Abercrombie and Fitch and attorneys are so expensive? Well, yours will be from PacSun and you also get three flip-flops for $7. Okay. Uh, but I'm gonna end with this. Um, you know what I re when I realized quality mattered? When I bought a harmonica from Cracker Barrel. That's not bad. Whoa, that was wacky. That was pretty fun. Um, thanks, Elizabeth. Give it up for Elizabeth, everybody. Snaps, claps, whatever you want to do. Scare your neighbors. Uh, yell at the top of your lungs. Uh, that was Elizabeth Fulton. Uh, she rocks. I forgot to throw up her name. I just realized. Well, you know you know her name. She's, she's awesome. Um, we're going to give you some quick little shout outs here before the next person. Um, now that I have the chat open, Lauren Smith, thank you so much for the donation. You rock. Jason, uh, Fle Flegel, he's going to perform. Both of these people are performing later. I'm going to butcher some names. I apologize, guys. Um, let's see. 
Elena, thank you guys so much. Thanks for tuning in, too. Also, shout out to Amanda Ozarzak. I went to high school with her, and she's tuning in. She rocks. Um, let's see. Christina, thank you. Oh, thanks, dude. Thank you for thank you for saying I killed my set. That was all new crap. Okay. All right. You guys ready for your next comic? Coming to the stage. Uh, you know him from Chicago, and if you, you're in D.C., you don't know him at all. Or I don't think he's ever performed out there. Um, give it up for my good buddy when I can get this video rolling. I'll be better as this goes along. All right, here we go. Give it up for my buddy Brad Rickert. Oh, hey, shtick. Great to be here in my home. Uh, uh, excited to do some jokes for you. Okay. Whew. <sighs> Joke number one. <clears throat> a lot of kids, they like to say uh, uh, shortened uh, little anagrams, right? Like JK instead of uh, just kidding. But I got a little bit of a potty mouth, so I say just fucking kidding. So, like, for example, I'd be like, uh, Hey man, I'm gonna shoot you in the head! JFK! When Prince William moved to the United States, did we change his name to the artist formerly known as Prince William? In America, we have fruit by the foot. In Canada, do they have fruit by the meter? <laughs> Some people uh, think I'm metrosexual, but uh, <laughs> I've never had sex with a train. <laughs> Okay, here is my impression of Robert De Niro sucking balloon helium. Uh, yeah. Well, you guys get it, his voice is different. When I get older and I have grandkids, I'm gonna sit them down and say, hey, when I went to my grandparents' house, I couldn't even get a Wi-Fi connection, and they will shit their space pants. <laughs> Birthday sex is some of my favorite type of sex. I just hate when the candles light my pubes on fire. <laughs> Phone sex is some of my favorite type of sex. I just hate when I get the buttons sticky. <laughs> Makeup sex is some of my favorite type of sex. I just hate when the mascara gets all over my balls. <laughs> Haikus are so dumb. I am doing one right now. I've wasted your time. Yeah. I had some Cheetos earlier today. Then I put in my contacts. Now that's dangerously cheesy. Okay, I peed on my Ouija board and it said I was pregnant. Guys, did you know that MySpace is the Gary Indiana of the internet? All right, I'm gonna do one more thing for you. I hope you enjoyed those jokes and the vigor with which I thrusted my body. Um, here's what I'm gonna do for you. I'm gonna share this children's book I wrote with you. It's called, There's Ketchup in My Coffee by Brad Rickert. That's me. There's ketchup in my coffee. And that just isn't right. There's a cat inside the fish tank. I hope that they don't fight. There's a sock inside my toaster instead of a Pop-Tart. And when Mommy looks at Daddy, there's hatred in her heart. Oh. When Daddy talks to Mommy, there isn't any love. Then they tell me to take a bath and put that toaster in the tub. These things don't make sense. They just confuse my head. That super sexy guy doesn't go in Mommy's bed. The ketchup in my coffee. None of these things are right. Also, I saw that super sexy guy with daddy last night. Okay, that's it. Uh, I'm gonna do an impression for you. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, here's my impression of George Bush in New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina. Good night. Whoa, that was Brad Rickard. Give it up for Brad. Be rad in the house. Uh, Brad helps produce Shtick out here and has a bunch of shows uh, at the store 
when the store is open and functioning uh, and does a bunch of other shows around town. He is uh, a madman and uh, reminds me of Jim Carrey. Dude is uh, out of control. And thank you for not wearing any pants during that. Uh, I think you're the only one who didn't wear any pants during their set. Fantastic. Okay. How you guys doing? You having fun out there? Thank you for all the comments. Uh, thank you for the donations. Thank you for the likes. I'm, I see that. Um, yeah. Continue to donate right here is the info. Uh, we'll take all your donations. Treat it like uh, you're ordering uh, a Red Bull vodka or a local IPA of your choice. Um, good stuff. Let's see. Who do we have next coming up? We're going to hop back and forth between Chicago and DC performers all night, baby. So coming up next, you know her as one of uh, the co-hosts out in Washington, DC. She's got a late night uh, bagel show. She's hysterical. She does improv. The one, the only, Stacy Axler. Hi everyone, I'm Stacy Axler. Thanks for watching Shtick Live tonight. I also want to thank Seth Payne and Elizabeth Fulton for setting up this live show. I know it's really appreciated. Um, I'll be honest, I haven't left the apartment um, in about a week. The last time I left was to get groceries. I haven't really been seeing a lot of people and I know that's all advised, but what I'm really thinking about is kind of how I socialize and I think Finally being set apart from other people has made me realize that I socialize incorrectly. I typically going into a social situation, I in the past know that it's polite, especially when you're invited to a party, to talk to the host and guests of the party. My goal typically is to find the nearest tame animal and try to make friends with it. So if I'm going to a party and you have a cat or a dog, I'm probably gonna be trying to talk to that thing. And it's not that I'm an asocial person, it's not that I don't like people, but in the past, I was surrounded by a lot of people on a regular basis who I can talk to. I have coworkers, I have people I live with, I have family, I do other things where there are just people. There are very few animals in my day to day. So seeing an animal is something that I just want to go after, you know, and, and I don't feel like I'm being a, a little wacky when I'm doing this. I know that it's not preferred, but if you had an opportunity to talk to 10 people or pet a cat, in my mind, there's no question I'm going to try to pet the cat. The thing about it is that when you're in a social situation, animals don't often like to be approached. They get a little skittish in big groups of people. So you need to spend your time working with the animal, trying to get it to trust you. This is all time when you're not socializing with the rest of the people in your social event or party or what have you. This is typically okay in regular parties. Um, if you're there for a specific thing, like a bachelorette party, this might not go well for you. You know, you may be called out. You may be told you're ruining the bachelorette party. And to that, I would say, then maybe you should have just shut your cat in the bathroom. Or maybe you shouldn't have even told us you had a cat. Because maybe that was 100% of the reason why you even came to the bachelorette party in the first place. People will judge you on how you socialize. And if I've learned anything in this week of not really talking to a lot of people face to face, it is that human interaction is good but I still really appreciate the interaction with animals because animals right away will make a judgment call as to whether or not they trust you and they will make that bond right away. It's instantaneous. Humans don't do that. They're, and that's because we have language messing it up. I have stopped trying to be suave. I've stopped trying to find cool lines. 
I am stop trying to use even the basics of human communication because I know that I'm probably gonna mess it up. I'm not that great at communicating. I'm not the worst, but I'm not great. But with an animal, this also applies to babies and infants. They will make an immediate judgment call as to whether or not they trust you. And I just appreciate that, that instantaneous judgment. And I'd say that because I'm very wishy-washy. I'm such an indecisive person. If I meet someone and I don't like them, I'm like, oh, maybe I should give them a chance. Maybe it was me. I don't know. Animals, they don't do that. And I, I think I say all this to say the next time I see a person in real life, I am going to be very happy about it. But I also would really, really like to see a dog or cat. And I don't know how to how to fix that. I don't have one, and I'm definitely not getting one now. So anyway, think about it. Think about it. What up for Stacy Axler, everybody? Hell yeah. Next guy coming to the stage, very funny dude. Uh, I do improv with him on a little team called the Young Hots, along with Brad as well. Um, He's performed in shtick once so far, probably many more times in the future. Very funny dude. Uh, please give it up for Sam Otter. Hey there, Stick crew. Excited to be a part of this. My name's Sam Otter. I'm represented by Ask Buck Talent. And I'm 5'3", 102 pounds. And a fun fact about me is that while I can technically read, I can only recognize the names of about mm, six to seven letters. Uh, Brad and Seth actually asked me, instead of doing comedy, if I could read for a role in a movie that they're doing, and I said, of course, I'd love to. Uh, so the role I will be reading for is uh, Xander Broughton, a student in a frat at the University of Tennessee in 2012 that almost died in a hazing incident involving butt-chugging. Uh, this is the scene from his press conference, where he denies the accusations. Okay, thank you very much. On Friday, September 21st, 2012, I made a bad decision regarding drinking. The decision almost cost me my life and I deeply regret it. However, scandalous accusations surrounding the event never happened and I completely deny them. The inaccurate reporting this past week has caused me to question institutions that most of us accept as truthful. I'm now concerned that organizations that we as students and citizens trust may not have our best intentions as their primary goal. At this point, my intent is to clear my name, my fraternity's name, and to punish those individuals responsible for the lies that have been spread around the world. Thank you. Um, and then uh, a reporter asks the question, Xander, can you clarify what happened that day? And so I will, I'd like to give Xander's response as well. Xander, can you clarify what happened that day? It's a long story. <laughs> okay, uh, wow, um, this is my first self-tape. Uh, <laughs> so I, I, I am excited that I was able to be a part of this. Uh, I'm sure uh, that this will be a fun show. I. I hope that I was placed 21st. Uh, thank you, and I love all of you. <laughs> so goodbye. Finally, someone let me out of my cage. Now time for me is nothing, cause I'm counting no age. Now I couldn't be there. Now you shouldn't be scared, cause I'm good at Oh man, keep it going for Sam Otter, everybody. I love that little outro <laughs> video too, Sam Otto. Xander, dude. I partied with that guy. He was in my fraternity. Sig up, baby. Fredonia, New York. Um, thanks for sticking around. Uh, if you're just tuning in, this is a live version of Shtick. It's Shtick Live. It's on Facebook Live. Uh, we're telling jokes. We're doing bits. It's freaking awesome, man. Uh, we're keeping you entertained on this Friday night in. Uh, social distancing at its best. Give it up for yourselves for staying in and keeping... Uh, everybody alive you're the real heroes here and give it up for another dc comedy legend so excited to see this video i actually haven't watched it yet so i'm really pumped i knew she would knock it out of the park as she always does give it up for kara kinsey oh 
How embarrassing. <laughs> you caught me when I just woke up. <laughs> oh, I look like a wreck. You'll have to apologize. It's I'm just being cooped up inside. It kept me just feeling really unsettled. You know, normally I go out and I do my philanthropy work, you know, like going out to galas. Pretty. Oh, also sometimes I go out during the day and I yell at birds to be quiet so people can take naps. It's another thing that I do. And I would, ugh, I would love to keep talking, but I just need to, I'm no good at all uh, before I take my first sip of champagne. It, <laughs> ah, just the cranky little monster I am if I don't get a sip. <laughs> okay. Mm. That's better. <laughs> oh good, I have some on my dress so someone else can clean it up. <laughs> you know, it's important to keep the economy going. Oh, guys, I mean this really is a hard time for everybody. Um, and so that's why I'm here talking to you, giving you some comedy, because I know um, it's a sacrifice to do without me. So here I am. Oh. But, you know, it hasn't been easy for me because, um, you know, I'm back on the antidepressants and so like, just excuse me while I just take my little morning cocktail. <laughs> mm. Mm. Ah. Well, now I'm full for the day. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? Let's get to the comedy. How about that? Mm -hmm. um, oh, you know what? <sighs> I just realized I didn't write comedy. I, I wrote um, how to help people. So, oh. <laughs> I'm always thinking of others. That's so funny. So I did. I did wrote down some uh, ways that you can pass the time since everyone's all cooped up. Um, I have things like... Um, I've been passing the time by playing with this little hair on my chin, the little chin hair that I've been doing that for like hours. Um, I mean, I forget my own birthday playing with this thing and it just, it doesn't, it's so wonderful because it's just not like the other hairs, you know, and uh, you just try to get it all spiky. Oh, well, I feel so good. Oh, I did so much fun. Oh no, how do you grow like that? How do you grow all like that? Because you're not like my other hair. Why are you on my chin, huh? Huh? Oh. Wait, ugh. Oh. <laughs> I was here with you. I forgot what I was doing for a second. You can see how effective it is. Mm -hmm. Alright. Moving on to my next tip. Um. Ooh, this is one. This is one that's keeping me busy quite a lot. Um, so this is, I stare down at my chest and I wonder um, how much bigger one breast is than the other. Because it's clear that one is bigger than the other, but I do this fun thing where I think about the volume, like in milliliters. So like I think that like the left one is bigger, but I think it's bigger by like the volume of a key lime. You know, like if you juiced it, extract it, and like pumped it, into the other one, um, but you know, that that science experiment probably is not advised, so it just leaves the mind to continue to wander, you know, like maybe it isn't a kilo, maybe it's a kiwi, but um, it just depends if you're counting like the volume of the skin or not, and like is it the juice or just like how much could fit inside the average kiwi or lime. <sighs> And am I on my period or not? That also has a big effect. I, the hours can be thought in that experiment right there. But if that, one of those two things isn't helping you out, um, there's something that my mom has been doing recently. So um, she's been filling her time by Googling alien conspiracy theories and how global warming is caused by sin, which is just a real fun headspace to be in. 
Um, so she can just spend her days kind of constantly looking out for sneaky little aliens and how the government is covering it up. And then also for people using the Lord's name in vain because they're, you know, the ones who are making it hard to grow azaleas in the backyard. Oh. But I gotta tell you, I'm exhausted. This has been a lot for me. Um, so I hope I helped. Maybe you lacked. Maybe you didn't. Um, but you know, it's nothing a nap can't cure. All right, guys, keep it going for Kara Kinsey. Uh, Kara, that set was awesome. Uh, I miss you. I miss all you guys in DC. And uh, let's keep the energy going for our next presenter, presenter, our next performer, hailing from Chicago, Henrix Blix. Hey, how you guys doing tonight? Hey, uh, go ahead and keep that noise going if uh, any of you guys are quarantined. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of you, a lot of lonely looks out there. Don't worry, me too, me too, right? Uh, and I'm treating quarantine as an opportunity. I'm treating it as an opportunity to find out what type of guy am I? Am I a kitchen guy? Or am I a bedroom guy? And as soon as I say that, you know which one you are, right? As soon as I say that, you know which one you are. But for me, for a little while, I wasn't sure, right? I wasn't sure. Kitchen, bedroom. The other day it hit me, I think I'm a living room guy. <laughs> because, because the living room, when you've been quarantined, the living room is like a vacation, right? It's like a vacation. You know that walk that you do when you're walking into your living room, right? Just not a care in the world, right? Because it's like a vacation being in the living room. Uh, anybody out there, go ahead and make some noise. Anybody canned zucchini or canned sauerkraut? You know, probably going to get in trouble for saying this, but sometimes I can't tell the difference between sauerkraut and zucchini. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. I've got my reasons. The reason is because I'm not sure which one I'm going to eat last. <laughs> you know, on the last day of quarantine, my diet's going to look like this. Uh, last of the beans, right? Maybe finish off the corpse of the person I'm living with. And then I'll eat a bullet. And then I'll eat the sauerkraut and the zucchini. You know what I mean? <laughs> We're all thinking it. I'm just saying it. But it's crazy. It's crazy stuff we're eating, right? I mean, I'm finishing off frozen pizzas like they're going out of style. Meanwhile, ground beef, you know, ground beef, right, is in the fridge like, hello, I, I expire in three days. Can we talk about me? I can't hear it because I'm just shoving in the pizzas like a madman. They don't expire for a year. What am I doing, right? <laughs> you know, here's what I should have stocked up on. A calendar, right? <laughs> Oh, what else you got? Uh, so, uh, dating stuff, right? Dating's pretty hard. Oh, man, that was awesome. That was <laughs> short, sweet, and hysterical. I loved the... Uh, I, sh I should have performed to cans. I feel like I'm just performing to an empty void. Uh, that was awesome. Dude, we got to have you on to do a full set at Shtick sometime. That was hysterical. Thank you. Keep it going for Henrik Blix. All right, you guys ready for your next comic? I know I am. Let's keep the energy going for the one, the only, the DC native, Lauren Smith. I am Lauren Smith, and I don't use a lot of toilet paper. This is a good thing. These are my legs. I shaved them for you for the first time since all this started. This. <laughs> is our family's first casualty from coronavirus. Dun, dun, da, dun, 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 da, dun. Oh, that's not a funeral. Same difference. So uh, surprisingly, I am single. Now, for those of you with significant others, I assume you're still maintaining basic hygiene. We single folks, not so much. That six foot social distance, that's for the smell. And coronavirus has also made me realize I'm a bit of a hypocrite. I want to keep my old people, but I kind of think we could stand to lose some old people in Pennsylvania, Michigan, Des Moines, before November. Hey, if they voted differently, they'd have gotten to live. And Trump himself 
He's in a high risk category. Now, speaking of old people, I myself just turned 50 this year and it is not what I expected. I thought I'd have money by now. I thought someone would love me by now. On the other hand, I thought I'd be way uglier by now. See, when I was growing up, the only woman on TV over the age of 25 was Mrs. Roper from Three's Company. So I was expecting to have full on helmet hair and a moo by now. And I don't, which is good. I was also expecting to have a Mr. Roper by now. And I don't. And if you've seen the show, you know that's good too. Last thing my self-esteem needs is a wormy guy in a Hawaiian shirt that'd rather have a 20-year-old bimbo than me. Still, I do remain simple. Simple. Single. So, if anybody wants to buy me a Metamucil in July, call me. My daughter says to me, you know, Mom, Spike's a boy. Maybe you could marry Spike. Spike is our cat. And I didn't want to explain the problem. She doesn't need to know I'm not into back hair. Now, she said that when she was eight. She's now 17. The only way she'd be that nice to me these days is if there was clothing in it for her. And she probably knows why I can't marry the cat. He died. It's okay, you can laugh at my dead cat. Spike would have wanted it that way. My daughter, not so much. She and her friends are the girls that I was scared of in high school. She hates her friends too. Her particular frenemy is Jenna, spelled G-E-N-N-A-H. Where have all the Sarahs gone? Long time passing. Yeah, they don't name kids normal shit like Sarah anymore. Yeah, we all fear Jenna. Last sleepover, I had to change the Wi-Fi password so she'd need me alive. And couldn't post dicks on my Instagram. Now, that is not true. I'm 50 years old. I don't know how to change a Wi-Fi password. But there are parental controls on our TV. Are you proud of me? Yeah, don't be. My daughter put them there. Cost me a hundred bucks at the mall if I want to watch an R-rated movie. Yeah, and she have never seen Game of Thrones. She says it's too violent for me. But speaking of violence, you can't blame kids today for being a little cranky. Like when I was growing up, school shooting meant hoops, not guns. And we got to go to school. But the good news, ladies and gentlemen, is that if my daughter ever goes back to school and there's a shooter, we have a plan. She's hiding behind Jenna. All right, guys, I've been Lauren Smith. Thanks so much to Shik Shtick ah, Comedy. Oh, boy, keep it going for Lauren Smith, everybody. That was awesome. I actually, I, I, a lot of these performers from DC, I've never had the chance to uh, see do their sets or meet yet. So this is so much fun. Um, that was great. I love it. So we have a wide variety of, of comedy coming at you guys. Um, all ages, all sizes, all perspectives. It's going to be great. Uh, let's keep the funnies moving along with another hilarious individual. Um, he submitted a, a shorter video, but man, is it great. Keep the energy going for the very funny, the Chicago reppin' Andy Rowell, everyone. Oh, uh, well, it is 3.26 uh, in the afternoon. I've been here since Sunday, Sunday, sometime, sometimes Sunday. Um, I've been sleeping eating, uh, watching television, <laughs> and I think I'm ready. I'm going to get out of bed.
So I'm back in bed. <laughs> <laughs> that dude, he's a trip. Kind of reminds me of like Tim and Eric type deal. Very funny. Uh, I've seen him do some uh, live stuff on stage and he kills it. So hopefully we get to have him at a future live performance of Shtick. But Andy, thank you so much for the video. Get some claps, get some snaps, some pats, all the ats. Uh, have some apps and zerts. Up next, another Chicago comic. Very funny man. He was on our very first shtick out here in Chicago. Give it up for Jeff Hack. Hey, guys. I'm uh, here in a, a park. In a park by my house. Uh, as you can see, there's uh, chess boards set up and... Uh, Figured I'd do the chessboard challenge. I don't know if you knew it. It's a new thing uh, where you just go to a public chessboard and uh, you wait for someone to challenge you. Um, so I'm just going to wait for someone to come up and challenge me uh, as a chess master. Not that I'm a chess master. I am not a chess master in any way. Um, I actually forgot to... Uh, as you can see, I forgot to bring my pieces. Um, so I'm adding a second part to the chess player challenge, which is whatever chess player comes to challenge me, um, they have to bring they have to bring pieces. They have to bring pieces for this board. Um, um, otherwise, I win by default. That's just kind of how chess challenge works. I don't know if you guys knew that, but that's how chess challenge works. And um, so I've been waiting here for about 14 hours, and uh, only a handful of people have walked by. Most of them were, like, walking their dogs and, uh, you know, didn't accept my chess challenge because they didn't want their dogs to see them getting fucking whipped on by a badass Gary Kasparov junior as i am garrick hasbrov's uh uh famous chess player just, you know, just for the layman's you know um so i mean i'm just waiting one of these tables eventually has to somebody's gonna gonna show up eventually there's a giant green cube uh i don't know what that's about but i mean i don't know i uh i've just been standing here screaming screaming out for someone to come challenge me at chess and uh the boards remain open um if you can get to old town uh within the next ooh, 18 19 hours uh i'll be here waiting for you punk punk uh gentlemen and ladies to uh challenge me to uh, challenge me in the classic gentleman's and gentlewoman's game of chess. Um, we won't use this one, though, because it's missing missing tiles, just like you'll be missing teeth strategically when you're done with me. On a strategic level, you'll be missing them because you'll get beat beaten so badly. But so um, here's the chess. Here's my favorite one. It's the cleanest. Uh, it's one of the only ones that doesn't have any uh, graffiti, graffiti, graffiti. And uh, see a suspicious car. They're suspicious because they're driving super slow. So I'm just going to ignore that. Somebody with a mask on. That's that's a creepily slow pace to be driving at, sir. Just so you know. Got the Buddhist temple. The Buddhist temple. This is where you... It's a convenient location because this is where you'll go for some meditation, for some peace of mind, for some uh, psychological and spiritual recovery after I blast your ass at chess. Okay? Clock is ticking. 19 and a half hours, so get here quick, all right?
Buddha can't help you, but he can make you feel better afterwards, all right? Bobby Fisher used to go to this friggin' temple after I smacked him up at chess. It's true. That actually happened. Somebody just coughed in the background, which is, uh, concerning. Level of consternation there. All right, bye. All right, guys, keep it going for Jeff Hack. I I don't know how to clap with this thing. Um, Shout out to Jeff. Jeff is a hysterical human being, um, and he is still out there waiting to uh, school your asses in uh, chess. So someone please go out there um, and and uh, give him a hand. He's probably cold, um, but he he will he will be relentless on the chessboard. All right, you guys ready for your next performer? It's Maurice Brown from Washington D.C. Give it up. Hello, everybody. I'm Maurice Brown. Welcome to Facebook Live, and let's hear it for shtick comedy, everybody. Round of applause, hearts, thumbs up. You gotta, you gotta love them for having us. We're stuck here during this COVID-19 deal, and it, it's kind of crazy. I mean, we're there's one segment of the population though that ain't afraid of no COVID-19 coronavirus during this global pandemic, everybody. Comedians. We just, we don't care. Where's the next open mic, the next Facebook Live? I just wanna perform, we don't care. One good thing has come out of this though. One good thing out of this pandemic has occurred for the first time, everyone, in 15 years. My coworker, get this, before leaving the bathroom, you guys got it. He washed his hands. So, how about a round of applause out there for this family, everybody? He washed his hands. It's amazing. It's a shame we have to applaud that, but uh, it is what it is. So, you know, I, I was on the Metro just before they shut everything down. And it's like you can't even clear your throat anymore without anyone looking at you crazy. Someone on the Metro coughed and everyone's head snapped like... Going, oh my gosh, can't the man just enjoy his indigestion? <laughs> I mean, but now we know that it's it's kind of crazy. Listen, everybody calm down, okay? Everybody take a breath and a bath. And stop eating bats. Okay. So anyway, it is what it is. It's, it's crazy. Uh, I'm 55 years old, everybody. I've been married 22 years to a beautiful lady from Brazil. Three kids, 23, 21, and 18. It's really hard raising kids, though, I gotta tell you. One of my sons, when he was in his early teens, used to take long, long showers. Okay, which is great for COVID-19, at least he washed his hands. But, I'm like, what are you doing in there? Knock on the door, what are you doing in there? He's like, oh, uh, I'm thinking. I'm like, okay. Well, uh, when you're done in there, make sure you uh, collect all of your thoughts. Yeah. And uh, uh, because no one wants to be standing in the tub slipping on your ideas. Okay. All right. So it, it's just difficult, everybody, raising children. That's all I'm saying. And when my kids were growing up, I used to tell them all the time, hey, listen, you're not thoughts. Okay. Understand that. You have a dad who's a black man that talks like Tom Hanks. It ain't gonna work. Stop it right now. So anyway, uh, it's difficult raising kids. I don't understand why good kids in 2020 wanna be thugs though. I don't get that. You know, I don't know of any thugs living in any cul-de-sacs. That's all I'm saying. You know why? It's very hard to do a drive-by in a cul-de-sac. Very difficult, you know? Really, you're a thug wearing braces? You're a thug with a comprehensive dental plan? Is that right? And your name's Trevor? I'm sorry, I don't think there are, there are any thugs named Trevor. You know, a thug name is like Bam Bam, Boo Boo, Bebe, Cornbread, Showtime. 
uh, neck bone, eyeball, Donald Trump, you know, just traditional, you know, everyday, but it's nothing special. I don't get that. You know what? This Facebook Live thing has been an interesting experience with no audience. It's kind of weird, but it's been fun. You guys have been a great audience. I'm Maurice Brown. May the peace of Christ be with you and your families, everybody. Thank you, and God bless. Thank you. Keep it going for Maurice Brown, everybody. Oh, man, that guy's great. That was my first time seeing him. Hysterical. Loved it, man. Okay, next performer. You've seen her last month in Chicago at Schtick, or maybe not at all because you live in Washington, D.C. Keep it going for Emma Atkins. Hello, everybody. Happy quarantine. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day so far. I just had my coffee, so I'm feeling great. Um, always just like the best way to start out my day. And um, I just figured, you know, tough times figured that like I could hop on here and like offer some encouragement to you guys. Um, so a few of you have been asking me some questions. And since we all have like a lot of free time, I figured that today would be a good day to do that. So I just wanted to go through some of them that you've been texting me. Um, how has this been affecting you? Okay, that's a great question because right now, you know, like school's out. So I've got the kiddos running everywhere and it's just been like pretty stressful because um, one of my sitters had to quit on me because she had to, you know, her college was canceled. So she had to go back home. Um, she's not going to get to graduate, but like, it's really affecting me because now I'm with my kids. Y'all, I'm not kidding. Like three to five hours a day. And that's just like so much like, but you know, being a parent is just so rewarding. So it's fine. Um, I am having to learn like their teaching styles because I just didn't ever feel like the teachers that they had truly understood my children. And, um, it's made it difficult for me to catch up because like, I know their hearts and I know that they need individual attention. Um, but just between Daxel and like Ray Lee, I just am, you know, really struggling with that, but it's fine. Um, the husband's doing great, Michael. He's just as wonderful as ever. Um, he's, he's okay. He's a doctor. So, you know, business as usual, but like, it's really like y'all, this thing is hitting people hard. Like I, it's just so sad and, um, it's going to take us a long time, you know, to get on the other side of this. Like it's affecting so many people like my day to day life. Y'all, it's just not the same anymore because like every mall is closed. Like I can't find anywhere to get my nails done anymore. Like, look at this y'all. This is so gross. I just cannot figure out like what to do about this. Um, honey, I'm making a video. Can you please be quiet? Thank you. Okay, if you could just... Okay, mommy's making a video. Can you just... Okay, can you go inside, please? I'm gonna count to three. Okay, do you hear me? One. Daxel, I am not kidding. Two. Daxel! Sorry about that, you guys. Um, just... Just the joys of parenting. Um, so, I, I just think that, like there's a lot of bad that's happened because of this, but like, there's also so much good. If you think about it, like, I feel like now that everybody's working from home, like it's really great because like you guys get to see what my life looks like, you know, because like working from home is just not easy. And, um, I'm thankful that I feel a little bit more understood by everybody. Everybody's talking about this. And if you like working from home, once all this craziness is over, I am looking for three boss babes to join my team. So please feel free to direct message me, ask me whatever you want to. And um, for those of you that just really feel like you're going through a hard time, because um, I had a lot of questions about that too, I just wanted to say like, it's going to be okay. Um, and there's nothing that like a glass of Pinot and a face mask won't fix. So just keep that in mind. Um, love you guys. Looking forward to it. I'm definitely going to be making more videos now that we have some free time. So let me know. I'm between a makeup, uh, tutorial, or if you want to see like my at home workout routine, um, or just like have some more questions for me, like, just please let me know because I would love to help you guys in this difficult time. Thank you so much. Bye. Okay. So last thing, sorry, you guys promise I'll leave you alone after this. Um, we do have a giveaway coming up pretty soon. So very exciting. Um, TBD on whatever, what all is going to be in it because at the moment, um, everything that is in the giveaway package 
is closed. So we've got a spray tan. It's going to be amazing, but it's closed right now. Um, and then we also have like a gift card to the juice bar, which is going to be so good because like cleansing is amazing. Um, it's closed, but we are going to get back to that and I will find some more things and everything else is just going to be a surprise for both of us. So it's going to be, it's going to be really fun. So tune in next week and I will tell you more. Mwah. What's going on guys? Give it up for Emma Atkins. Yeah. Uh, she's hysterical. She uh, she rocked the house last month at Shtick. Um, got to meet her parents. Awesome set. Very funny. Uh, love that character. Lining it up. Let's go with uh, someone that I've seen perform a bunch in Washington, D.C. Uh, she's performed a bunch at Shtick as well as all over town. Super funny. Um, very excited to see this set that she's about to throw down. Please keep it going for Sandy Bernstein, everyone. Hi, I'm Sandy Bernstein, and this is my cat, Callie. Uh, follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Sandy Bernstein Comedy, or check out my website at SandyBernsteinComedy.com. So... Uh, I hope you all are healthy and relatively sane during this quarantine. I know that the best way for me and Callie to avoid stress is to send my husband to the grocery store because there's nothing on the shelves. I mean, they say you should never go shopping when you're hungry. Now you can go shopping when you're fasting. thought that deserved more, don't you, Callie? Well, anyway, uh, the CDC says that you should maintain a distance of six feet from one another. Uh, they call it social distancing. Well, I prefer to look on the bright side. At least now, I have a legitimate reason not to have sex with my husband. I was running out of excuses. So, Callie, did you hear that in Baltimore City, Crime has actually gone down. Yeah, because they're no longer drug dealers on the corner. They've switched to Purell. Even the squeegee boys are in on it. And you would not believe the prices they're charging. $30 a squirt. That's more money than I put into my 401k. Come to think of it, that's more money than I have in my 401k right now. Which is why I'm going to be working until I'm 85. But look, I am working. I'm very thankful and uh, I'm able to work from home. So I'm grateful for that. But I got to tell you, um, the working from home is, is not all it's cracked up to be. Yeah, because I have less time to goof off now than when I was in the office. Because I'm on these endless Zoom video conference calls and, and they make us keep our video on. So I can't even play with my phone. I mean, I'm seeing more of my colleagues now than when I was in the office. And let me tell you, they are getting on my nerves. Okay, well, one in particular, and that's Patty. I swear, every time I see her ugly face, I just want to slap the shit out of my monitor. I mean, how long is it going to take her to learn how to mute herself? I mean, you just click on the icon with the microphone that has a line through it. Okay, it's not rocket science. I mean, but no, we have to suffer through ear-piercing feedback or her shrill, dumbass parakeet. I mean, it's enough to make me and Callie lose our shit. And because we have our video cameras on the whole time, it's like we're being forced in one another's homes. Now, Patty used to have the nerve to give me a hard time about how messy my desk was when we were in the office. You should see her kitchen. It looks like an episode of Cops. There are dirty dishes piled everywhere and her great Dane is licking them. And, and she's just like, hee hee hee, now I don't have to rinse them before I put them in the dishwasher, hee hee hee. Oh, and, and that dumbass bird is right next to her. And the cage is filthy. And I swear I've seen cockroaches. Ugh. And to think that I ate her jello salad. 
at the last company pop up. <laughs> Sandy Bernstein, and this is my cat Callie. And uh, follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Sandy Bernstein Comedy, or check out my website at sandybernsteincomedy.com. So, Callie, did you hear? Don't lick your butt on the camera, that's rude. And every time I try to tape this, my husband goes into the kitchen and makes some noise. <laughs> Fuck him. She was starring in the video. Oh, what a kitty cat. <laughs> That's my husband. Say hi. Hi. Oh man, keep it going for Sandy Bernstein, everybody. I uh I threw in she sent the outtakes for her video, so of course I had to throw them on at the end there. Uh always hilarious. Always uh a character. Sandy, great to see ya. Hope you're doing well out there. Okay, let's keep rolling along. So uh, true to shtick tradition, um, we've got a couple people that are performing tonight for the first time ever um, that were slotted to perform for the first time ever in the upcoming months um, at Shuba's. Uh, and we, uh, we're keeping the tradition alive. So I, I always hate to call people out, but I just want to let you know that the next performer, this is his first time doing stand-up. Um, so let's see. Let me get the name lined up correct here. Okay. All right. Keep it going for Asher. There's a lot of songs about being in love, but only one song that I know of that tells you what you're supposed to do with boots. Walk with them. No wonder it's so hard. You have to put your pants on before your shoes, because if you put your shoes on first, then you can't get your feet through those holes. I can't believe I have to say this. Pants before shoes. That's the order of operations. If you didn't learn that in math class, how would you ever know? Pants before shoes. Oh, fuck. I forgot to put on my socks. Now i got three things to worry about. Socks, then shoes, then... Wait, wait. Pants before shoes. Socks, then pants, then shoes. Why are we putting on our socks before our pants? Hang on a second. I forgot my underwear. Fuck. I, I fucked up the order of operations. Okay, let's take everything off and start from the top. Underwear, then socks, then shoes. Oh, fuck, I forgot my pants. Take off my shoes, take off my socks, put on my pants. Why did I take off my socks? I didn't need to do that. Put my socks on, put my pants on. I'm already wearing pants. Take the second pair of pants off, put my shoes on, underwear, then pants, then socks, then shoes. Order of operations. A few days ago, I was going for a walk to keep myself sane and I had to put on my coat, so I took my shirt off first. Then I put my shirt back on. Why the hell did I take it off? And walking, you know, it's not as easy as you might think. You put your left leg in front, then your right leg, then your left leg. Imagine if you did your left leg twice, you'd just be stuck. So this old song, and the man in the back said, everyone attack, and it turned into a ballroom blitz. And the girl in the corner said, boy, I want to warn you, it'll turn into a ballroom blitz. But you got to warn people before something happens. Order of operations. So it's good to have a routine in these dangerous times, though. I like a bagel and cream cheese for breakfast, and that's an easy recipe. You take a bagel, you put some cream cheese on it, now you gotta put it in the toaster. Oh, fuck! Order of operations. Let's try another breakfast. I got cereal, I got milk, so let's get a bowl, pour in some milk. Oh, no. Oh, no. Keep it going for Asher Stolman, everybody. Sorry, I forgot your last name at the beginning there. That was fun, dude. Order of operations. I love it. For all my order of operation fans out there keep it going snap it up clap it up uh let's do this one let's go let's throw it back to washington dc with uh the one the only aaron patrick hey everybody i'm aaron patrick that's e-r-i-n 
Patrick. I am glad to be here with you all tonight. Hope for hopefully y'all are having a great time. And um yeah, just wanted to share some of my experiences right now. I'm mostly disappointed because uh over my 33 years I have developed some uh very important skills, uh certain skill sets as a husband, as a father, as just a person uh that I no longer have to use anymore. Uh for example, I um during this pandemic, during this quarantine, I no longer have to worry about um, how to handle someone trying to join me in a hammock. It's kind of a phobia of mine. You know, you get back and you're comfy and you're just, you know, you got that perfect, you know, just position and everything. And somebody goes, hey, let me come join you because you look really comfortable right now. And I'm going to slide right next to you. Don't have to worry about that anymore. Um, also, uh, as you know, like I said, I'm married. Uh, one thing I no longer have to worry about is preparing myself for one of the biggest fears a lot of married guys have, and that is you're at a bar with your wife, and your wife happens to walk away for a little bit. Maybe she sees a friend, she's gotta go to the restroom, uh, whatever it is, um, and uh, a nice young single lady taps you on the shoulder and says, Hey, big boy, how you doing tonight? Um, yeah, I don't have to worry about that anymore. Um, thank goodness, uh, because it was probably going to happen eventually at some point in time. But I was already ready. I was like, babe, she just wanted a drink. I said no. No means no. Right? I was ready to go. But now I don't have to worry about that anymore. I've been, another thing I've been working on is my retirement speech for my Sunday night co-ed division four rec league soccer team with a bunch of buddies I went to high school with. Um, I guess I don't have to worry about my retirement speech from that anymore. Uh, like I said, I'm also a dad. Uh, I like to take my son for walks around the mall when it's raining. I don't have to worry about that. Uh, but also I don't have to worry about um, really angry teenagers making me feel horrible about myself as I walk my son around the mall, uh, you know when they say things that just ruin your day, like, you look like a person that has no friends. Yeah, just brutal honesty. Um, yeah, so still kind of hurts about that one. Still getting over that one. That was a tough Tuesday. Anyway, um, but uh, the other thing uh, that I learned, this is a, this is a very... Uh, skill it's taken me several years to hone in as a married man um, and that is uh, learning to celebrate in silence uh, if you're not sure what I mean uh, I'd like to show you a clip um, of how I used to act uh, when I was watching a sporting event that was on late at night my wife is asleep my son had just fallen asleep and um, actually prior before that uh, how I used to celebrate before all of that happened in my life so uh, let's take a look Yes! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Woo! And now I would like to show you um, how I went about, or how I go about celebrating now that I have a wife and a three-year-old son, and I can't be as loud and rowdy as I used to be in my 20s. So uh, let's take a look at how I uh, celebrate now. Yeah, so um, thankfully, <laughs> sports don't exist anymore, so now I don't have to do that. And I've worked really hard on that. That's It's not easy to celebrate a huge win in silence and just to keep all of that silence wrapped inside. Um, anyway, I guess there's some good things that came out of this. So hope you all enjoyed. Again, I'm Aaron Patrick. Y'all can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Aaron Patrick Comedy, and that is E-R-I-N-P-A-T-R-I-C-K Comedy. Thank you very much. Y'all have a great night. Oh, man. Keep it going for Aaron Patrick, everybody. Let me slide on over here. Um, that was great, man. First time seeing Aaron perform. Very funny individual. If you're just tuning in, we got stand-up going all night long. Uh, I got a bunch more performers lined up. And uh, there's Tony. Rock on. <laughs> Tony Lazzaroni. <laughs> Guest appearance. The only guest appearance from the live stream that you will see tonight, maybe. Maybe it, you might see a cat. You might see a cat at one point. Carrie. Um, we'll see. Cross your fingers. Keep it going for Andy Milney. Good evening. 
During this educational video, you will learn different techniques to help you survive the COVID-19 virus. Please rewind this VHS tape when this educational video is over. Here are some tips you can use. Hoarding things like toilet paper and canned goods can keep you safe. Canned goods may be used as weapons. And toilet paper can also be used as a weapon. You can use your TV guide to help you stay informed, as newspapers may not always make it to your house, but the TV guide is a very reliable source of information. Make sure that people are not using the internet at your home so that your dial-up modem will, so that you can use your telephone in case of important oncoming calls. Also on this VHS tape are instructions for your new 1994 Taurus station wagon. I haven't seen this a lot lately, but I used to live in a really busy, a really busy street. Um, I saw this a lot. I wrote a song about it, and uh, I miss it. I miss, I miss seeing this. Mexican guy on a bike. That's it. That's the whole song. Go to YouTube. There's a video I made a while ago that has a lot of views. It's um. Type in Mario 3 Masturbation, and this will be the first thing that comes up. Um, there's a whole video for this, but this is the song. Driving and speeding in a vigorously masturbating, swerving and I'm screaming and I violently come, I come! Swerving and I'm screaming and I'm vigorously masturbating, come on the wheel, and then I come on the dash, and then I go on the floor, and then I'm done, and I'm done. And then I... And then I shit on the seats, splash open the tires, break all the glass, then forget where I am, tip up the plates, bust up the lights, jump on the roof, and then I break into your house at night and walk into your kitchen, and I'm cooking and I'm cleaning and I'm vigorously masturbating, washing and I'm drying, violently come, I come, stirring and I'm frying and I'm vigorously masturbating, come on a pot, and then I come on a pan, and then I come on a glass, and then I'm done. There's more to it in the thing, in the actual video. But give it a... Give it a... Give it a... Give it a... Give it a watch. There's... Keep it going for Andy Milne, everybody. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Uh, that video was hysterical. That was actually my first time seeing you perform, Andy. That was freaking ridiculous. Um, you got a lot of likes when the cat was playing keyboard. Um, 
Well done. Let's throw it back to Washington, D.C. Elliot Bromberg. Oh, thank you guys so much for having me. Uh, Facebook, uh, it's really an honor to be performing here. Um, I want to give a quick shout out to Strict Comedy for putting this event together and allowing me to do my hour-long special on coronavirus jokes entitled Elliot Bromberg Coronavirus. Uh, check, please. And that name is a work in progress. Uh, I don't know how you guys are doing right now with coronavirus. I think one of the more underrated aspects of this disease is kind of the mental health aspect, um, right? You know, at least for me, like I'm just completely falling apart right now. Um, I grew this mustache day two, thinking it was a good idea, and now I can't imagine a life without it at all. Um, people do not like it. I was at the park uh, the last weekend. This little girl started running up to me and her parents pulled me away. And I wasn't sure if it was because of social distancing or just because of the mustache. Um, yeah, I, I I don't know. Things things are getting really weird with my roommate. My roommate and I have already lived together for two years, but we've never spent this much time with each other. Um, intentions are really mounting right now. And uh, you know, needless to say, uh, I'm pregnant. I, uh, I, I don't know if any of you guys are developing any like hobbies or skills. All my friends are kind of like learning new things. Um, like you, sir, what, what are you doing? What's that? Excuse me, sir. Boning my mother is not a hobby. I'm going to have to ask you to leave right now. Sorry about that. Uh, that'll be on YouTube later, though, as comedian own stand-up heckler. Uh, no, I, I don't know. I haven't really been doing anything at all. Um, I have actually been getting really into crime, uh, you know, just in case this gets worse. It's, it's kind of smaller right now. I sort of just spotted a need in the market, right? You know, schools are closed right now, and somebody has to sell those jewel pods to middle schoolers. Uh, don't get mad at that. That's just good old-fashioned capitalism, baby. Um, I am worried, though, that it could get a little bit worse, and I am fully prepared to go kind of like pirate crime overlord in the event that we do go into an actual apocalypse. Um, I haven't done a lot yet so far, but I have captured a pigeon spray-painted him to look like a parrot just in case. Um, I've also been practicing the pirate voice mateys, which um, also helps with the social distancing. Why won't anyone talk to me? Oh God, I'm lonely. Um, it's scary though, it's scary. Um, you know, I have a lot of pre-existing conditions anyway that uh, could really affect me if I get sick. Um, I have asthma, um, I have high blood pressure, which is something that I just found out. Um, I don't really know where that came from. Uh, it's not like it's, you know, genetic or anything. I eat pretty healthy. You know, the only drugs I've really ever done are, you know, alcohol, weed, cocaine, acid, molly, DMT, shrooms, whippets, poppers, special K. Uh, and that does sound a lot when I say it out loud. Um, but I just want to clarify special K. That is, that is not ketamine. It's just what I call craft singles. Um, because this is a real meal that I used to eat in college is I would come home drunk and I would take one craft single and then wrap it around a hot dog and eat it cold. You call it raw dogging it. It probably explains the high blood pressure. Uh, hmm. uh, I do have a lot of other stuff though. Like I, I've got a bunch of allergies. That's the other thing. I don't know if I'm getting coronavirus or if I'm just, it's just the pollen. Um, I, I'm not allergic to peanuts though. Uh, cause I'm an adult. Um, and if anyone watching right now is allergic to peanuts, I either need you to grow up or go back to your room. Okay. Uh, Am I the only one that's sick and tired of all the, you know, people in our country with peanut allergies have been getting special treatment? Right? Like, all I'm saying is if you have to clear out of a building just because I ate planters an hour ago, that's God telling you to give up. I can feel through the screen right now some of you are not on board with this, and that's fine. I'll die on this hill alone. Cowards. <coughs> Pricks. Um, not allergic to uh, peanuts. Um, I'm allergic to horses which is a weird allergy to have. Um, uh, can't say it's ever come up. I will say the silver lining of being allergic to horses means of course that I will never date a horse girl, you know, which we all know is code for Republican women. Boom, got him, come on. <laughs> yeah, this is DC, so we're getting political. <laughs> Elliot won the system zero. Um, don't get mad at me about that joke. Uh, uh, normally, um, you know, I actually had a girl come up to me after a show one time and she was like, hey, not all Republicans own horses. And I was like, this is the part you're mad about right now? Like, all right. Uh, no, and to be fair, she was right. Not all Republicans own horses. You know, some of them own people too. Got him again. All right, you guys have been 
a good crowd. I assume millions of you are watching. Thank you so much. Whoa, awesome. Keep it going, guys, for Elliot. Oh, man, what was Elliot's last name? Bromberg, Elliot Bromberg. Shots fired on people with peanut allergies. Fuck them. They're the first to die. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I, I, I love you, Mom. Uh, let's keep the party going. Next, coming to the stage. Uh, this dude is hysterical. I got to see him perform with his improv team, Ghost Baby, uh, at uh, one of our Young Hot Saturday shows. And uh, it, this was going to be uh, one of his first times trying out the mic with us. Um, and he submitted this rad video. So uh, enjoy. Give it up for Andrew, guys. Hello, everyone. This is Andrew Cochran coming at you, not live, from Raleigh, North Carolina. I figured that I would go insane if I stayed at my studio apartment in Chicago. Uh, so I decided to come down here where the weather is uh, a little bit more favorable. Now, if you are in Chicago, toughen this out by yourself in a studio or one bedroom, whatever. If you're by yourself, seriously, more power to you. You're a lot stronger than I am mentally. Um, I decided to come down here to enjoy some free food, some warm weather, and some comfortable lodging. This is a couch that I used to sleep on in college. It's now in my parents' living room. Very comfortable. 10 out of 10. I highly recommend anyone to, to come take a seat if you, if you ever get the chance. Um, and it's pretty relaxing here. I think I made the good choice. Except for my dad having this annoying cough. Uh, but anyway, uh, when I heard that shtick was uh, doing an online showcase, my initial reaction was, cool, let's do it. Uh, I've never done a, a video stand-up set before, so this will be a cool, uh, a cool learning moment for me. Um, unfortunately, after reviewing my set, I realized that it can really only be done live, at least a good portion of it. Um, for instance, I was going to open up with a lot of crowd work, and you can't really do that when there's no crowd. I was going to come out and say, who here has been to Long John Silver's? You see, when there's no one to answer the question, well, I just look like an asshole. So I had to cut out any, any sort of crowd work because I need that give and take. Again, I can't do crowd work without a crowd. So we cut it, scrapped it. Um... I had to cut out any act outs too. Can't really do any act outs while I'm sitting down. I could have had my family uh, film me, but they're already just so disappointed in me. I did need to subject them to this as well. I've actually locked myself in the living room to film this because I couldn't face any further embarrassment. Um, dinner's actually been ready for 30 minutes and I've been sitting up here doing this. I've done like 50 takes. Um, so I'm going to be eating cold chicken tonight um, for you. Don't say I never did anything for you, shtick audience. Um, so yeah, no no act outs, no crowd work. The third thing that I'm going to be removing are any jokes that sort of toe the line on possibly being offensive. Now I'm going to come out and say I'm not an offensive comic. I have no desire to shock anybody or, or split the crowd. But I do like to play with audience expectations. I mean, I think, you know, it's fun. It's, it's one of the rules of comedy is to subvert people's expectations so some of my setups seem kind of racy um but they don't really play if i'm not there to clown it up and sort of like be a human there present with you i'll, I'll give you an example um i do this thing called ethnic impressions ethnic impressions okay so here's an ethnic impression for you folks this is a chinese guy at the bank okay here's a chinese guy at the bank yeah i'll just take that in singles Thank you. You see, that's funny because when I say I'm going to do a Chinese guy, everyone assumes I'm going to do some some racist thing. They all oh, freak out. And then I do it in an American accent. And people are like, oh, yeah, that's right. I guess where you're from doesn't necessarily dictate how you sound. Huh. I am the asshole. And it's a cool teachable moment. It's funny, you know, it plays with the expectations. But you don't have the when you don't have the audience there to sort of tighten up and then relieve, the whole thing just comes off as, well, racist. Um, so we'll scrap that. Anything that anything that may be seen as racist, because when you remove the human element, it's just a lot easier to hate somebody through a screen. 
Uh, for instance, Donald Trump, people say when you meet him in person, he is a lovely human being. But for some reason, he's he's in a box. He's on a screen. And well, you know, we all feel about that guy. So I don't want to be I don't want to be seen as a bad person. I don't want to be hated by a bunch of people online. Um, I already had to deal with that in college back. My name was Simony Timlins. Um, so anything that might be offensive, gone. Any act outs, gone. Any, uh, any crowd work, gone. Unfortunately, that only left me with one joke. Um, uh, so I'm going to say it for you now. Here's my impression of a death dominatrix. Come again? Yeah. When, when there's no one to laugh, everything just sounds n not funny. Check out this book my dad has. It's fucking weird, right? What was up with that book? We didn't get a chance to look at it long enough. Um, it did look very strange. A child in a cowboy hat. Back to Washington, D.C. With a little person we like to call Lauren Weiss. Hi, everyone. It's great to be here remotely here at the Shtick Live show. Far, far away from all of you tonight. I named my son COVID. I thought it was a cool combination between the name Cole, like Cole Sprouse, and David, which is my dad's name. But now I look like a fool and my son has been ridiculed and shunned. So how is social distance treating all of you? Because it's treating me really well. I haven't been catcalled in like several weeks. Not since March 1st when I was walking down my block and a man yelled from behind me, Hey, it's Black History Month. You've got a fat ass. And I just didn't have the heart to tell him that only one of those things was true. Anyway, I've been social distancing since it since before it was cool. I'm a mono girl in a coronavirus world. I have mono. And having mono is actually not fun. Not even as fun as it sounds. Because they tell you about the fatigue and the nodes, but what they don't tell you about is the full body rash. Which was a real treat. So I'm trying hard to get healthy again. I've been trying fasting. It's where I eat really fast. It saves time, which saves money, which I then use to buy diet pills. But diet pills are really bad for you. Uh, so my digestive system is failing, but you can't argue with my new shapely figure. Uh, you know how they say that people always end up looking like their dogs, like their hair looks like a poodle's ears and shit? Seems like a good reason to get a really sexy dog. You know, like a greyhound. Think of the skinny little waist and the powerful legs you would have as the owner of a greyhound. It's definitely easier than going to the gym. So I have a dog. This is my I love her dearly. I think she loves me too. But our relationship got a little more complicated and I had a nosebleed. So I had bloody tissues, threw them in the trash can, whatever. Thought that would be the end of it. But no, I saw those bloody tissues strewn across the floor of my bedroom and my dog tearing apart the bloody shreds, drinking my blood. She looked me in the eyes and licked her lips. And if that's not proof that she's developed a taste for human blood, I don't know what is. Anyway, now I know. If I died, she would probably eat my body. I'd like to become a nutritious meal for my dog. In all seriousness, I need to be careful of my diet because I'm lactose intolerant. I know, you've never heard of this before. You're interested. You want to know more. I'll give you more. My otherwise perfect body cannot digest milk. So I tried drinking almond milk, but then I read an article about almond production, and each nut takes a gallon of water to grow. So I just cut out the middleman, and now I have my cereal with 100 gallons of water. You might ask, isn't that kind of soggy? Yes, it's soggy. It is disgusting. But it's the principle of the thing. I'm so principled that I even manage to be principled when I do maybe less ethical things. 
So I like to eat foie gras, which is a delicious delicacy made from a fatty liver of a goose. And the way they get the liver nice and fatty is they stick a tube down the goose's throat and force feed the goose corn. Uh, this is inhumane, obviously. But luckily, I have found a solution. I found a way to eat all the foie gras without all the foie guilt. So here's what I did. When I would eat foie gras in France, I would eat it until I was completely full. In fact, I was uncomfortably full. Then I got my French friend to stick a tube down my throat to keep feeding me foie gras. This is all part of the plan. Things really took a turn for the worse when she ate my liver. But did I mention it's the principle of the thing? And my principles are intact, although my liver is not. So it may not sound like it, but I had sex recently. Sex with me is like an Uber because I prefer if you come immediately. Don't make me wait six minutes. I'll just be grumpy and stare at my phone until you come. So just come immediately. I have another version of the joke. It's sex with me is like a lift. Same joke. I just say lift instead of Uber. And the way I choose which one I say is whoever's giving me 30% off rides. Because even with all these principles, I can still be bought. All right. Thank you for tuning in to the live shtick show. Keep it going for Lauren Weiss, everybody. Oh, my God. Uh, candle shtick comedy coming at you. People are getting creative with the uh, the mics that they have to use. I like it. Uh, next up on the scene, this dude is hysterical. I'm really excited to see what he does. I've heard him rap before, and I've seen him do improv around town. Um, he is a delight. Give it up for Cleveland Moore. What's up? I'm gonna do a song for y'all called Making Music. I don't even know what it's about. I really don't. I just, I was, I was high. <laughs> My point, Andre recording this shit gonna be weird. I, I got it, I got it, I got it. Wait, you think making music is easy? Yeah, that bullshit mainstream is cheesy, but making music ain't easy. See, you gotta flow with it. Drop the mic and roll with it. Ain't say shit yet, but I'ma still spit it. People stepping back so I can get it. Comedy music is an art form loss. You grab a guitar thinking you will boss. But shut up, we all friends and you Ross. I'm Chandler, bitch. Phantom of the Opera. I'll be the chandelier. Crushing on your neck like Vladimir the Third. That's Dracula. If you didn't know that, check your vernacular. I'm a shark in a pool full of fishes. A great dishwasher, but I'm breaking your dishes. Call your mama up to come clean up the pieces. But I'm not finished. Nope. Ain't even started. This Dutch oven. Grab the covers. I farted. A bunch of you wanna be faking your stinger. If we squared up, bit, I'll be the winner. Ain't need a gun, bit, I'm the trigger. You wanted me, you got it. Now everybody into your pockets. I ain't free, you say you struggle, but you ain't me. I am I and I is we, but you ain't me. Uh, people taking my shit literally, but I'm not real. I don't know what you're seeing me. I'm cellophane in the camera lens, you mundane heart and people in the bins like, well, I wanna be like them. Fuck that shit, Ray J and Kim. Think this is the end? You think this is the end? You think this is the end? Check it again. I'll throw out another album for your mom and a friend. <laughs> oh my god! I felt like such a piece of shit doing that. Wait, wait let me see that. What's up? Uh, this next song, I don't know the name to, uh, but yeah. Hey boy, I just call and see what you're up to. Check on you. Let me take you to a place, a super weird place. Put a gun in your face, can't reach a mace. You in submission to my vision. We all Jedi's in the kitchen, killing children. We ain't a Ken Skywalker on a mission, ain't a villain. We on the dark side, but we got permission, yeah. We got permission, yeah. <laughs> 
I got keys to your building. You be working, I be living. Making eggs in your kitchen, your girl chilling. Ain't got no mask, I ain't a villain. But I'm killing your fridge, we be liquor mixing. I got tools to your house, I'm fixing. Like, why, why, why am I so cool with the drip? Got the drop on you hoes, take a sip when I sip. I'm a dog barking, dog bark bowl full of weed. Got the lights bark, we smoking, you choking. Turn out the lights dark. I got jokes for you, but you can't wait. No material for you, turn your hair straight. Mind over matter, your liquor, bullet in your head, I killed it. I got jokes for days, but I ain't gonna tell them. I can put them online or I can sell them. Not a comic, not a rapper, just I'm not again. A bachelor, my eagle will tiptoe. I'm a harvest, I'm a tractor. Try this hardest. Collect my crops, it's a feast. We all eat, Darnell asking for a fry. Hit the beat while he cry on my feet. Won't deny that I keep all my leftovers, but I'm still hungry. Bankroll is laughing at poor folk like it's funny. I just want a little money, sonny. I just want a little money, sonny. Little money, sonny? I said, imagine when you're on the boat, I'm the captain, the ways of life, try to prevent my drive, but I'll be slapping, while you slacking, pour it out your cheek, you be liquor laughing, dog, you ain't courage, leave the attitude, shit, you discourage me, I said, imagine, that's all I do, making situations up for the crew, I'm the joker with the flu, Corona opened up a bottle or two, yeah. Said, imagine I'm a CEO, we ain't got money, but we pay and blow. You can make a snow angel out of Columbia snow. Hit the flow up and up your nose. You ain't gonna snow. It's like coffee, but white, like cougar pussy, but tight. Make you wanna fight and run. Call your baby mama up, you wanna speak to your son. You having fun, then you crash. The drip hit like Wari on a smash. I said, I said, imagine that's all I do. Making situations up for the crew. I'm the joker with the flu. Corona opened up a bottle or two. I'm the silly kid in class who was eating the glue, eating the glue. <laughs> And hey, boy, I'll just call and see what you're up to. What? Check on uh, Talk to you later. Bye. Thanks. Uh, Keep it going for Cleveland more. Bars. Straight bars. Dude, that guy's out of control. Um, I, I, Those were new tracks for me. That was awesome, man. Uh, I've seen him do some other... Um, live versions of his songs as well at Brad's uh, show over at the store and fucking knocks it out of the park, man. He's funny, dude. And he's really good at improv. So check him out. Cleveland more. Keep it going. Uh, all right. Let's throw it over. We're going back to the East Coast. Coming up next to the stage. Mark Palchik. Hey, are you enjoying your social distancing? I'm Mark Palchik. I'm 69 years old and I grew up in Akron, Ohio. But I love living in America. Except, you know, it's getting so expensive, right? I mean, you would not believe what it costs these days to buy a politician. <laughs> I'll tell you, growing up in the 60s was a different time. We had no video games, so we actually had to play sports. And I got really good at baseball, card collecting. I'll tell you, there was nothing to do in Akron when I was growing up. Well, except for going to evangelical preachers to be saved, and I went. I got to see the Reverend Rex Humbard preach at the Cathedral of Tomorrow. Whoa, he was amazing. He had such charisma. He had such power. You know, to this day, I can still hear him preaching. I have the power to take away all of your sins. I have the power to take away all of your ills. I have the power to take all major credit cards, <laughs> but not American Express. Boy, howdy, I wanted that power. So I went to my career counselor and I said, Rabbi, <laughs> some of you got that. I want to be an evangelical preacher. And that's when I found out they don't let Jews do that. <laughs> well, you know, last week I had an epiphany. And no, it was not cleared up by penicillin. And that was that age like Gender is not binary. For instance, when I was 16, I thought that 30 was decrepit and old. I mean, that was the age of my parents. Now that I'm 69, well, 
70's looking pretty, pretty good. Well, unless, of course, you've fallen off that gray cliff, you know, pushed out of your job because of your age. And I'll tell you, once you fall off that cliff, it is a short tumble. First you lose your job, then you lose your home, and before you know it, you are in death's lobby. You know, Florida. Ah, Florida, where the beaches are wide and the melanoma is only skin deep. You know, actually, Florida is a magical place. In fact, that's where us boomers go to make our parents disappear. <laughs> I got to be careful, though. My kids are starting to look at me like I ought to disappear. Truth is, I'm so old on the subway. Pregnant women give me their seats. Yeah. And my best pickup line? Hell, I've fallen and I can't get up. But I'll tell you, I still have plenty of vim left in my figure. Oh, yes, I do. I happen to be younger than all the remaining presidential candidates. I take people half my age, well, before the social isolation, on 90 minute comedy walks. And I walk my dog every day, twice a day. Except you know what? That dog stops every 10 minutes so I can pee. Hey, have you noticed that seniors and stoners both philosophize way too much? Oh, yeah. I mean, stoners are like, <coughs> and no, that's not COVID-19. <coughs> Whoa, that's good shit. Whereas seniors are, <coughs> Whoa, that was a good shit. Thank you very much. Enjoy your isolation. I'm Mark Palchik. Keep it going for Mark Palchik, everybody. Oh, man. Good stuff, man. Let's, uh, let's throw it on back to the Midwest. Give it up for Janelle Murphy. for tuning in from your couch, your bed, and your toilet. Uh, appreciate you all staying charm and fresh out there. I um, want to do a special shout out to those that also have turned their plastic water bottles <laughs> into boudets. <laughs> <laughs> it's that type of attitude and innovation that uh, keeps us scot-free. Uh, so my name <laughs> You know, we got a whole production crew That's here. good. This is high budget. That's good. That's <laughs> good. Keep going. Special. Uh, shout out to our producers. <laughs> um, uh, so, yeah, my name's Janelle. Um, but when some people meet me, they get really excited. They're like, oh, Chanel, like Chanel number five. And I'm like, yeah, but like Chanel, the knockoff version. <laughs> Designer flea market handbag, but with the self esteem and class of a sassy gay man. <laughs> Chanel. Uh, so, uh, this is such a crazy time to be in quarantine and single. Uh, the number of increased cat ladies is just through the charts. In Cat House. Um, you know, it's so, it's so crazy that, uh, this isn't even my cat. <laughs> I stole it. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a, there's a lot going on. Um, I, uh, a lot going on right now in the world. Uh, I too, um, you know, lost my job, but, uh, before I did, I, I worked a lot of odd jobs before getting laid off. Uh, I was, uh, a corn dog lady at a music festival. I was a waitress at Joe's Crab Shack for six months, and I was a brand ambassador for Tiffany's Jewelry Department Store. 
Um, but the weirdest job that I ever had was working in an office uh, because I never realized how much people sneezed and coughed until we shared the same recycled air. <laughs> Uh, the office. <laughs> that could have really used some laughter. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. No, you're wonderful. Um, so the office world is so weird to me. Like people would ask me what I did for work, but I never knew how to answer uh, that question because they told us we defined our job title. Um, so some people would claim data entry, um, but I would just tell people, I don't know. I copy and paste. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that cracks me up. If anything, this is for me and you guys. Uh, you know, uh, so there's no place like an office. Uh, like, where else can you go and see three people interacting about them both having chicken and rice for lunch? You have chicken and rice. I have chicken and rice. Me too. Chicken and rice. Um. So on another note, uh, I don't know about you guys at home, but. I went into quarantine with a list of goals, like learn another language, read a book, and work out. But all I've really done is buy a Nintendo Switch, sex an ex, <laughs> and lie about coming. <laughs> it's not me. Uh, it's not you. It's me. Uh, no, really, it's the notifications on my phone that keeps distracting me. <laughs> uh, but I was dating prior to quarantine. I was in a, a relationship, um, was, I was actually, I was dating a musician. And dating a musician is a lot of fun until you realize how exhausting saying no to free cocaine can be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It's uh, it's almost like you need to take a bump just to keep up with saying no. <laughs> and uh, I don't even do blow. Um, but there are pros and cons to dating a cokehead. Uh, pro, the house is always clean. Uh, con, he's vacuuming at 5.30 in the morning. Um, I did ask him, though, what are the pros and cons to dating a stoner? He said there are none. Uh, and I thought about that. I think he's onto something. And that something is stoners don't steal when they run out of weed. They make friends. <laughs> but I, uh, one last thing before I go. Uh, I did actually uh, try cocaine for my very first time uh, prior to being in solitary home confinement. Um, and I, I, I tried cocaine, and I have to say, uh, what a time to have a nasal drip. Uh, thank you all. Thank you so much. My name's Janelle Murphy. It's been a pleasure. Find me on Instagram at Comedian J. Murph. You're beautiful. Stay safe. Well, thank you. Keep it going for Janelle Murphy, everybody. I need I need the crowd the the crowd sound effect. People are getting creative. I love it. Uh, I'm pretty sure she was uh, using a lint roller as a microphone. Nice. You gotta they come in handy, especially when you got cats. Whether that was her cat or not remains to be seen. Coming up next, we have a very funny, very hilarious individual, Jason Flegel, everybody. Hey, I'm Jason Flegel. I'm doing stand-up comedy from my living room, which is a weird experience for a stand-up comic. We're used to doing it in bars and restaurants, places like that, where we can get the immediate feedback of the audience. So I'm just going to have to picture you guys staring blankly at me and not laughing. Uh, but it's all good. We've all had to adjust to coronavirus, right? Uh, I, I had to make a big adjustment. Uh, my, girlfriend, uh, my girlfriend and I are long distance. I live here in D.C. She lives in Chicago. She was going to move here to D.C. And that's all on hold because of coronavirus. Uh, I am being cock-blocked by a virus that is not something... I ever expected to happen. I guess I should have hung a sock on the doorknob or something. Who knew? We are practicing extreme social distancing, 800 miles apart. I don't like it. Um, but, um, you know, I've been getting ready for her to move in. 
Last month, I was cleaning out my apartment. I got rid of a bunch of books. I said, oh, I, I want to read these books, but I don't have time. Get rid of them. Who knew? Um, I also, I bought a new vacuum cleaner. It was actually the last thing I bought before everything went on lockdown. And if I had known, I probably would have bought something else, uh, you know, like vitamins or face masks or time machine, something, anything. Vacuum cleaner, not particularly useful during a global pandemic. I feel like I'm not going to have anyone over. How clean does my apartment need to be? The only person here is my dog. 90% of what I'm vacuuming up is his hair, so he needs to check himself if he's going to get judgy on me. Uh, but before I bought the vacuum cleaner, I checked out the reviews online, right? And uh, most of the reviews were good, which is why I bought the vacuum cleaner. It did have some bad reviews, though. Um, the bad reviews, they were all the same. First of all, they said, this vacuum sucks. Leave the comedy to the professionals, people. Um, but they all complained that the vacuum was too powerful, which is a complaint I just don't get. Oh no, it's making my house too clean. That doesn't make any sense to me. I'll tell you what, if you don't like how powerful the vacuum is, vacuum your living room, then sprinkle some extra dirt on it. Problem solved. But I really want to see these people's other reviews, right? Do they go to restaurants? Oh, the food here is too good and the service is too great. I don't like it. You know, they break up with people. Oh, she was too beautiful and we never fought. I can't stand it. But we all know people like that, right? I guarantee you, you know someone who when this whole lockdown is over, everyone's going to be out there celebrating, out there very happy. One person you know is going to be like, this sucks. I was halfway through watching The Good Place. Now I'm not going to have time to see how it finishes. But I have a solution for you. When the quarantine is over, just go into the office. Welcome back. Go up to your boss. Say, oh, boss. It's so good to be back. <clears throat> Boom. Two more weeks of vacation. Hey, I'm Jason Flegel. Thanks for listening. Keep it going for Jason, everybody. And I got his last name right. Just saying. Pretty sweet. I'm on a roll. Okay. Uh, let's keep rocking and a rolling. All the way from Chicago, Illinois, Douglas Wanderski. Shit fire. For those of you that happen to not be used to hearing that around here in these parts, I'm going to give you a little shit fire 101 right now. All right, so basically it's heard down south, right? I lived in Georgia for a while, and that's, that's where I was turned on to it. And I'm going to give you an example of a good time of when to bust one out. All right, so basically you're at a Waffle House anywhere in the state of Georgia after the Leonard Skinner concert, and you just get done ordering a double order of hash browns, scattered, covered, chunked, and diced. And your server, Lucille, looks at you and says, Oh, I'm sorry, darling. We ran out of hash browns about four to five minutes ago. And then you say, Shit fire! I was looking forward to tearing me up some hash browns after Skinner was tearing it up tonight. Shit, Lucille. Shit fire. All right. I can give you uh, another example if you want. I can go all night long like Lionel Richie. All right, so you're leaving a apartment party with your friend at like two or three in the morning. You're under the influence of like two or three different things and you happen to get into a car that looks exactly like yours. But once you get inside and sit down, then that's when you notice, well, that the dash looks a little off. But you're thinking like, well, I am under the influence of two or three different things right now, so. And here's the crazy part. Your key happens to start that car that's not yours, right? And then, then you're like, well, hell, it's got to be my car, right? And then you back out of that spot. And then once you start driving forward a little bit, then that's when the dash starts to catch your eye a lot more, right? And then that's when you're like, what the hell? And then that's when you uh, do, a, do a, a quick look in the back seat to see what it looks like back there. And then that's when you notice something back there that's not yours, a duffel bag. Then that's when you slam on the brakes and you yell, 
Shit fire! This is not my car! <laughs> yeah, so basically, when you're surprised, that's when you're uh, busting out a, sh uh, a, a shit fire! And by the way, this story uh, does happen to be a true story. And the, uh, the star, the driver of the story happens to be yours truly. But don't get shit twisted or whatever, right? This happened a long time ago. This didn't happen like last weekend or like this morning or whatever. I don't do stupid shit like that anymore. Hey, don't, don't, don't judge me. I was accidentally stealing cars when when some of you, some of y'all were like two months old or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I'm no spring chicken. All right. Anyway, so the other day I received my Gwyneth Paltrow candle, and I'll say like it's cool that there's a candle out there that smells like her JJ, right? And not the JJ of, uh, you know, like Catch Me Outside Girl. Catch a whiff of my snatch. How about that? <laughs> yeah, so anyway, so I lit my uh, Gwyneth Paltrow candle and then a, a minute later, I burned my penis. Talk about a burning desire. All right, now this story is not true. I've, I've never burned my penis. But if I do, I'm guessing I'll be like, shit fire! Shit fire! All right, keep it going for Douglas Wanderski. Dude, that was uh, insightful. Those good, good stories, man. Thank you. Appreciate that. Love the Catch Me Outside girl, also known as Bad Baby. It was her birthday yesterday. I follow her on Instagram. Hey. You got to stay up to date with uh, all these young hoodlums. Am I right? Okay, let's keep partying with more comics. Uh, the next person I have lined up uh, is Hilarious. She has performed at uh, Shtick in DC a bunch of times, and uh, she does not fail to bring it. So without further ado, Eileen Haley. A lot of people ask me, where do I come from? And I just tell them, you know, I come from a small island kingdom right off the coast of Manhattan. Uh -huh. Yeah, you might know it as Staten Island, New York. It's home of many famous people like Peter Davidson from Saturday Night Live. And it's the setting for The Purge. It's even the home of the Wu-Tang Clan. Let's hear it for Ghostface Killer. You know, the beaches on Staten Island, although it's surrounded by water, they suck. So in order to go for a swim in the ocean, we have to hightail it over some bridge to New Jersey. And you know, I've got a big problem with that. And the problem is in two words probably already guessed in New Jersey. So when I was given an opportunity to go to Florida on my vacation, oh my goodness, I jumped on it. I mean, Florida, the sunshine state where all the rich folks go, very posh. But you know what? <laughs> Nobody ever told me you don't go to Florida in July <laughs> because in July, Florida is hotter than Stugats. I mean, we wondered, why were the airfares so low? And why were the accommodations so cheap? You know, when we asked the concierge for extra coffee because he only gave us two friggin' pods, he said, if he gave us extra coffee, he's gonna have to give it to all the other guests. And we were like, Stugat, what other guests are you even talking about? You know, we did get the extra coffee. <laughs> you don't mess with Staten Island. But let me tell you, Florida, friggin' Florida, you had to mess with us, didn't you? Yeah, I'm talking now about the great Florida Tomain poisoning incident that was sustained by my unsuspecting husband, Mike. 
I mean, he ate some food on that boardwalk that gave him more than Ajana. <laughs> it sent us straight to urgent care, then off to Walgreens, where he got Cipro and I got Glade. Enchantment. Room freshener. I mean, let me say, I don't like scatological humor, but I really did need that enchantment, number one. On the label it said, feel the magic. But let me tell you, there was no magic to be felt. Uh, 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 uh. Unless you want to talk about hallucinations as a form of magic. Because Mike started hallucinating. Uh-huh. He was so dehydrated. He said that he saw faces of cats on the ceiling over the bed. Just their faces, no body. And that the cats were spitting at him. I said, the cats are spitting at you? What are they spitting? Oh, he said, <laughs> olive pits, goobers, malted milk balls. I'm like, oh my God, you poor guy. Well, in a few minutes though, a couple of days, I should say. It seemed like hours and years. Um, he felt a little bit better, so we hightailed it to the beach. Yay, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. Let me tell you, that was the year of the red tide. And if you don't know what the red tide is, it's a gargantuan, a gargantuan, let me say it again, gargantuan bloom of red seaweed that hit the coast so that swimming in the ocean consisted of just trying to not, not to get tangled up in this red seaweed around your neck, your arms, your torso, your legs, everything. You try not to drown. So, you know, come to think of it, it reminded me a lot of the red cabbage that my mother used to serve us as kids. Mm -hmm. Every Sunday, red cabbage and pot roast. Ugh, the pot roast is this amorphous glob of, of meat with feeds of fat running through it. Ugh, it's disgusting. And you know what? I am a vegetarian now. But you know, come to think of it, down in Florida, trying not to drown in that cabbage water, I realize now <laughs> I was the pot roast. Friggin' Florida vacation. That's my time. I'm Eileen Haley. Keep it going for Eileen. We got one, two, three, four, five comics left, guys. And uh, and then that's going to be it for us. Uh, but, man, I saved the best for last. So buckle up. Let's throw it over to the very funny Brian Lopez. Like everyone, I've been struggling with the quarantine. Unfortunately, it's been leading me to ask all these really strange questions. Where is my neighbor going at 11.27 a.m. every day, promptly at that time? Where is the special and special K? And how edible is dog food? My biggest worry is at what point will I go insane and just develop my own conspiracy theories? So far it's been a week and I've disappointed myself because I've come up with nothing. So in an attempt to quell my boredom, I decided it's time I search for something deeper within myself. And in my quest for finding meaning, I decided to sign up for 23andMe. Who am I on a genetic level? Well, I'll find out. You get the kit and you spit into the vial, which was easy for me because I've spit into a lot of weird things in my life. So it's by far not the weirdest. So in a week or so, I get my results and I can't open it. Will this change my life? Will I become someone new? Will I become one of those weird shut-ins who just pop out once a year to develop some cryptic message to my neighbor about staying the fuck inside? Obviously they have the huge disclaimer, please don't use this to make life decisions or act irrationally, but it's been a week. I've been living in a fort of cereal boxes. I obviously would have wished I read that a week ago. So I open the email and I find out I'm half European. Wow, I'm so used to being called 
that Mexican looking guy. You, or my favorite, big man with the undeterminable racial traits. However, now I have a new struggle, self-oppression. Which side should I be on? Oppress E as an Hispanic or oppress Er as a European? It doesn't help that I'm about a third Native American. I mean, at least I'm more Native American than Elizabeth Warren. That's good at least, but it doesn't help much because I don't have a Mike Bloomberg in my life to make fun of. If anything, I'm my own Mike Bloomberg. Like, do I take away my own home? Should I start a casino? Can I trust myself with blankets? And I can't even stop there because apparently I'm also 6% Sub-Saharan African. Now I'm having to go on Wikipedia to figure out what that entails, really. I'm having a crisis of conscience as, what stereotypes should I follow? Which should I avoid? 23andMe doesn't have a guide for that. I'm relying on Wikipedia to learn about the plight of my peoples. So if anything, don't do 23andMe. Instead of answering questions, I wound up with a whole lot more. And it still didn't tell me what my neighbor was doing every morning at 1127. Thank you. My name is Brian Lopez. Keep it going for Brian Lopez. Hell yeah, man. He, he did, uh, he did stand up for the first time with us. Um, I think that was our second shtick show over at Shuba's. Uh, and he crushed it. And it was really fun. It's fun to have you back again, Brian. Throwing it over to Walter, everybody. Give it up for Walter. Hey, what's up, everybody? So I read that Americans sheltering at home are binging on Oreos and chips, replacing healthy stuff like quinoa and kale. But I view this as a kind of no-win situation, because Oreos and chips will kill you faster than the motherfucking virus, okay? So stay away from that shit. So we ran out of hand sanitizer in my house yesterday, and I thought it would be a fun idea to make some of my own. So I found a recipe on my son-in-law's iPad, and it was purified carbonated water, alcohol, sodium citrate, and natural raspberry juice concentrate, which I thought was kind of weird. Turns out it was a recipe for White Claw. Uh, <laughs> if you rub it on your hands, it won't kill the germs, but it will give the virus a nice little buzz. So that's good. Uh, these daily coronavirus briefings from the White House, don't they just fill you with confidence? You know, now stable genius MD wants to reopen America by Easter. Like the whole country is a CVS that was closed for renovations. You know, be one of the first hundred customers in the store and tell them what they win, Johnny. It's a fatal disease, Donald. Ah. Those are the uh, Trump supporters clapping in the audience, by the way. I love these folks on Facebook saying COVID-19 is no big deal. It's just like the flu. Really? Is it? I mean, it's 10 times more deadly. That's like having a case of herpes and your friend says, oh, it's just like a cold sore. Keep fucking everything in sight. It'll clear up by Easter, I'm sure. So I've been uh, teleworking for two weeks now, which means I'm home all day with the cats. And it's fascinating because I get to observe what they do all day, which is absolutely fucking nothing. I mean, seriously, my cat's like... Hey, I jumped from the couch to the recliner and back at least five times. Get off of my back. Hey, slide me one of those double stuffed Oreos with tuna, will ya? Yeah. So the pets are on guard now because we're the main carriers of the disease, of course. So I go to pet my dog, who, you know, steals cat shit out of the litter box on a regular basis. And he looks at me like, you think you're touching me with those hands? I don't think so. <laughs> So one thing I have learned during this crisis is that online grocery shopping is bullshit. <laughs> like, I ordered a bunch of stuff from Peapod like a week ago. Yesterday, I get an email saying, the following items you ordered are not available. And then it says, everything. Everything is not available. And an hour later, the driver delivers an empty box. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? Like, I realize now that shopping with Peapod is a little like tantric sex, because you get all worked up and nothing ever comes. 
Well, okay. We'll, we'll keep that one. We'll keep it. It's, it's bad, but we'll keep it. So I'm getting emails from every fucking business that I've ever patronized in my entire life saying they're monitoring the virus and my safety is foremost in their minds, which I do appreciate. But do I really need to know that the makers of Slinky take the COVID-19 outbreak seriously? Like, what's the worst that can happen? It can't crawl down the stairs for 10 to 14 days? Jesus. So the most confusing hashtag for me right now is quarantine and chill. I thought it meant quarantine and get the chills. Honestly, it made me a little paranoid because I woke up with chills the other morning and freaked out. Just freaked out. Turns out it was 20 degrees outside and someone had turned the fucking heat down. Anyway, um, sheltering at home has given me a little more time to do things like go through my old record collection, dust off the old LPs. God, the stuff that I bought when I was a teenager, you wouldn't believe it. Like, Johnny Cash sings the best of ACDC. She was a fast machine. She kept her motor clean. She was the best damn woman I had ever seen. Taking more than her share had me fighting for air. She told me to come, but I was already there. And one of my all-time favorites, Ethel Merman singing Stevie Wonder, ladies and gentlemen. 13-month-old baby broke the looking glass. Seven years of bad luck. The good things in your past. When you believe in things that you don't understand, then you suffer. Superstition ain't the way. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, that's my time. Thank you, Shtick Comedy, and everyone stay healthy out there. Keep it going for Walter, everybody. Oh, my gosh. That guy was turning up. I love it. I love it. And he's got the Vokes to back it up. Throwing it over to Jeff Hi. Hi, everyone. Thanks for watching. When you're married, they tell you for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, but nobody says anything about being confined indoors for an indefinite period of time. This is definitely a test. My wife and I were in Florida when this happened. Why were we in Florida? Look at me. And after two days indoors, my wife said, we have to get out of this apartment and go home. I asked her why. And she said, there's more room there, and I'm sick of your face. That's why we're home. I don't want to say that things are getting boring, but last night, my wife and I put on the Roomba and spent the next hour following it around the house. Things got weird when the Roomba tried to hump the vacuum cleaner. It's okay. Love is love. One night I was coming home from a show and my wife called and asked me to bring home something snacky. Snacky. That's not even a word. So I asked her what she wanted and she replied, something that I'd like. Oh no, that's not helpful. I'm pacing up and down the snack aisle like I'm waiting for a delivery of toilet paper. A guy comes over and asks, what can I do for you? And I said, what would my wife like? And he said, yeah, good luck with that. Ladies, tell us exactly what you want. You're complicated. And we're not. You know this. I had to call Giant to see if they had the flu vaccine in. And as I'm dialing, my wife says, ask for the pharmacy. Well, thanks. No wonder the produce guy was so confused. We usually only have two things on our mind, beer and football. My wife loves the show Say Yes to the Dress. But you notice there's no comparable show for the groom. That's because it would last for five seconds every week. Tonight on Say Yes to the Tux. 
guys, what do you think of this tux? Dude, say yes already. Then we can get some beer. See you next time on Say Yes to the Tux. I hope there's a football season. Everyone loves fantasy football. And everyone wants fantasy football advice. So let me give you some. Nobody cares about your fantasy football team. I know one guy who talked about it so much at home, his wife actually said it would be better if he was having an affair. Because he wouldn't talk about that. And I've been married a long time, but I still look at other women. Well, not now. There are no other women around. But usually I do. All, all married guys do. Except for one guy I know, he says he doesn't because it's disrespectful to his wife. That's sweet. I have a nickname for him. Liar. You know that as soon as he leaves the house, his wife's watching Magic Mike. A young guy I know asked me what marriage is like. I said, let me tell you a story. My wife asked me if I wanted to go somewhere. And I said, no. And she said, oh, we're going. And I said, so why'd you ask me? And she said, I wanted you to feel as if you were involved. And that's what marriage is like. My wife was holding a hammer, putting up a picture. And I said, I better stay away from you while you're holding that thing. And she looks at me cold in the eye and says, that's not how I would kill you. I said, you've thought about this? She said, it's my backup plan. On the day of her anniversary, I went to her Facebook page and I wrote, Happy anniversary to my wonderful wife. This counts as a card. Yeah, she didn't mind. We've been married for so long, we just get each other whatever cards are on sale. You don't know how many times we celebrated Kwanzaa. And I've been married for so long, I've forgotten what sex is like when you're single. There's a single guy at work. He said, I can't wait to go home. My girl's going to be there. and We're going to have sex tonight. And I said... But it's Tuesday. You'll see. My name is Jeff Heisen. Thanks for watching. Keep it going for Jeff Heisen, everybody. Oh boy. He's right. That's all that's all we care about. Fantasy football and beer. Don't get married. Yeesh. My wife. Okay. <laughs> it's getting late. It's getting late, guys from DC with some spoken word, Mackenzie Bills. Hello everyone. Amidst this pandemic, I just want to take a moment and really think about, you know, everything that's going on and just wanted to share this really touching, dramatic poem. It's really touched my heart ever since I was little. And I think that you might feel the same. go. Together, together, together everyone, together, together. Come on, let's have some fun. Together, we're there for each other every time. Together, together, come on, let's do this right. Here and now, it's time for celebration. I finally faded out. Yeah, yeah. That all our dreams have no limitations. That's what it's all about. Yeah, yeah. Everyone is special in their own way. We make each other strong. We're not the same. We're different in a good way. Together's where we belong. We're all in this together. Once we know that we are all stars and we all see that, we're all in this together and it shows. Where we stand hand in hand, 
We make our dreams come true. Together, 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 everyone. Together, together. Come on, let's have some fun. Together, we're there for each other every time. Together, together. Come on, let's do this right. We're all here and speaking out with one voice. We're going to rock the house. The party's on now. Everybody make some noise. Come on and scream and shout. We've arrived because we're all stuck together. Champions, one and all. We're all in this together. Once we know that we are, we're all stars. And we will see that. We're all in this together. And it shows when we stand hand in hand with gloves. Make our dreams come true. We're all in this together. When we reach, we can fly. No inside, we can make it. We're all in this together. Once we see, there's a chance that we have. And we take it. Wildcats, sing along. Yeah, you really got it going on. Wildcats, in the house. Everybody say it now. Wildcats everywhere, wave your hands up in the air. That's the way we do it. Now let's get to it. Time to show the world we're all in this together. Once we know that we are all, well, we're the stars, that we're all in this together. And it shows where we stand hand in hand, make our dreams come true. We're all in this together. When we reach, we can fly. No inside, we can make it. We're all in this together. Once we see that there's a chance that we have and we take it. Wildcats everywhere, please wave your hands up in the air. That's the way we do it. Now let's get to it. Come on, everyone. Thank you. Keep it going for Mackenzie Bills, everybody, with a little little poem, some spoken word for you guys. But we have saved the best for last. Uh, Matt Torres is going to grace us with some hilarious stand-up comedy live from the Laugh Factory. Give it up for Matt Torres. Put your hands together for Matthew Patrick Torres. <laughs> Everyone give it up for your host. You guys ready to have the best day ever? It's a really high bar I just set up. <laughs> Don't you hate when people say like the best day ever? It's such a weird thing to say, right? People are like, oh, it was the best day ever. And I was just like, no, no, it wasn't. <laughs> and uh, my friend said it and I was like, that's not true. And then like, I like tell my wife, um, I'm like, what was your like best day ever? And uh, she said something, but I forgot what she said. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I was just waiting for my turn to speak. <laughs> and my best day ever, uh, I was 16 years old. I was a young lad and I grew up on the south side of Chicago. <laughs> I need a ride home. <laughs> and my mom's boyfriend he came up with a monster truck and drove it like on the lawn. It's crazy. You, I've never seen a monster truck. I grew up in the city. Uh, it was amazing. It was huge. Then he gets out and he's, I was like, this is a monster truck. And he was like, yeah, it is. And I, he was like, you want to drive it? And I was like, yes, I do. He threw me the keys. I caught it. He's like, do whatever you want. It's yours for the night. 
So I took this thing out. I picked up my girlfriend, my best friend. We were like with disposable cameras taking pictures. It was the best day of my life. I always think about it. So I told my wife this and she was like, why would like a grown man let a kid use his monster truck? And I was like, cause he's super awesome. She's like, you know monster trucks cost like tons of money. And I was like, yeah, he trusted me. <laughs> and she's like, and he wanted you out all night. <laughs> so the gears get to going in my head. I was like, oh man, my mom was getting monster trucked. <laughs> and the crazy part is, it doesn't bother me that much. Cause she still does that thing. <laughs> I've never driven a monster truck since. <laughs> Not one time. Uh, I used to be a 911 dispatcher. You guys know what that is? You thought it'd be someone more put together looking, right? <laughs> I always think like when you see it on TV, I assumed before I saw that it would be like doctors and stuff. Like how do they know all the medical things, right? You know, like baby choking and stuff like that. Uh, so what happens in real life, it's a bunch of people that look like me and or less, and <laughs> there's a bunch of charts, uh, charts and like a computer. So it's like baby choking, you go to baby thing, you go choking and you flip it and you start reading baby choking stuff. So that's how it really works. And uh, so I'm on week two of this, uh, at this dispatch job, 911, and I get a call. The lady was so frantic, I, like I could barely understand her. And she's like, help, 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 uh, my grandpa, I just woke up and he's dead. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> my grandpa just died too. <laughs> and she's like, what do I do? And I was like, you gotta take this each day at a time. <laughs> And as the days will go on, this will still be one of like the worst days of your life, but it'll get better. And eventually you'll start thinking more about the good times you had with your grandpa and you'll get through this. And she was like, I think I need like an ambulance <laughs> or something. And that sounds like a super fake story, right? I have a recording if anybody wants to listen. They played it for me in the small office where I was fired. <laughs> I put part of it on my podcast, uh, check it out. Um, <laughs> anybody here live in Chicago currently? You guys heard about this cool thing, uh, gentrification? <laughs> it's coming to a place near you. Uh, <laughs> it's already happened to me. Um, it's just me and one other guy left. <laughs> on my block. Uh, the other guy, he must have been there forever because even before I came there, he lived there and his whole family lives there. But uh, he's a criminal, so I can't wait till he gets taxed out. <laughs> and uh, his favorite thing he likes to do is he likes to yell at like passing cars, King Love, King Love. <laughs> and uh, it's, he's really scary. He's, <laughs> he has a little tiny ponytail. He's in his 30s, but he still rides a bike with pegs and stuff. <laughs> I'm very scared of this guy. So I avoid him at all costs. Like I'll go on the other side of the street. I'll come through the alley. I don't want beef with him. He has nothing to lose. <laughs> He's terrifying. But uh, so like these hipsters, this huge hipster house, it's like 15 people in a three bedroom apartment <laughs> that live down the block from me. And so their leader, <laughs> she's driving down the street. And this guy comes up to the car and he's like, King, love? And she almost hits him and swerves away. She rolls down her window and she goes, what did you just say to me? He was like, King, love. She's like, oh yeah? So she, she, she reversed her car and parked it. And then she rolled down her window again. She's like, what'd you say? He was like, King, love. And I was like looking through the blinds like a coward. And I was like, he's gonna murder this girl. <laughs> So after she's done parallel parking, which seemed like forever, uh, she gets out and sprints to the guy. 
And she gets in his face, and she's like, what'd you say? And he was like, King Love! Like, all crazy, and I was like, oh. She's like, what does that even mean? And then I was just sitting there waiting. He's just staring. There's like five seconds of silence, and he's just like, that's the gang from this area. And I yell it to, like, protect the block. And, just get out of here. <laughs> She's like, all right, bye. So she leaves. And the crazy part is they're neighbors. <laughs> they see each other every day. The other day, she just comes, like, trotting out the house. And she just looks at him, and she just, hey, Oscar. I've lived there for years. I didn't know this criminal had a name. <laughs> so he's just quiet. He doesn't acknowledge her. just staring off. He's like... Hey, Kelsey. <laughs> Thanks, guys. That's my time. Keep it going for Matt Torres, everybody. Bringing us home straight from the Laugh Factory. Actual human beings laughing and responding. Pretty crazy shit. Um, thanks, Matt. And uh, that's it, guys. We're at the end of the first Shtick Live uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we, I think we consistently had about like 20 to 30 people the whole time. So, um, round of applause, snaps, claps, all that for, uh, everybody who came out and performed tonight. Thank you so much. Um, crazy collab between DC and Chicago. Loved it. Thank you to Elizabeth Fulton for helping to organize this as well as Brad Rickert. Um, you guys rule all these sets were awesome and really fun. I hope we got to, uh, entertain a lot of you guys tonight on, uh, another Friday night stuck indoors. So stay safe. Um, if you could, uh, and you haven't done it already, go ahead and donate to our PayPal account at stick comedy, uh, at gmail.com. Uh, last I checked, I think we were around 145 bucks. So, um, yeah, any little bit that you can donate, um, if you still have a job, would be great. Um, it's going towards a great cause. Again, that's going towards the Airedales GoFundMe account, as well as Chicago COVID's 19 Response Fund. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll do this again, hopefully next month. Uh, have a great rest of the night, and uh, thank you. Thank you all again. Stay safe. We'll see you at the next one.